Hello and welcome to the show. In this quick video, I'm going to take a look at lithium battery capacities. Do you really get what's written on the outside of that battery? Okay, so what I'm using here to test the battery capacity is actually an electronic load. Uh, this one is a standard 60 watt electronic load, but it also has a battery testing and battery capacity function, which I'm utilizing. Uh, what I'll do is I'll run through the four batteries, the four lithium cells that I've selected for this test. And as they uh, finish, I'll put up the results on the screen in a table, and we'll just walk through how each of these actually performed and compare that with their printed ratings. Okay, so the first cell off the block is actually a ultra fire cell, or at least it's branded as an ultra fire cell at 3000 milliamp hours. I was fairly confident when I bought these that they were knockoffs, but let's test them and see what actually happens. So the test has gone through successfully and no surprise, they do not produce the 3000 milliamp hour capacity as written on the battery. It's about 800 to 850 milliamps. Um, a fair bit less actually than the 3000 milliamp hours claimed. The second battery is a GTL. Uh, this is a, a fairly old battery. It's had about 30 or 40 cycles, but um, still fairly usable. So this is one of the very first lithium batteries I got my hands on. And again, I expected this one to be a knockoff. It's got a claimed capacity of 2,800 milliamp hours. And let's see how that one does. Okay, and again, no surprises. Didn't live up to the 2,800 milliamp hour claim. This one's pulling about 750 milliamp hours as its actual capacity, even less than the Ultrafire. Okay, the third cell that I'm actually going to test is claimed to be a genuine Panasonic cell, and I believe it actually is. Um, they're around about $10 per cell, they're a protected cell. And let's see how this one does. Okay, so there you go, significantly better results. This one's a claimed 3200 milliamp hour capacity, and it's producing 2700 milliamp hours, or 2.7 amp hours of actual battery capacity. It's a little bit less than the overarching claim, but the cell is also a protected cell and it's cutting itself off at that lower voltage. I think this one's about 2.7 volts. All right, the last cell, the one I've had, uh, I've had this cell probably as long as I've had the GTLs. Um, these are a blazer. They're a very good cell rated at 3,400 milliamp hours. Uh, they're a genuine cell, of course, and they are protected. Let's see how this one does. All right, there you go. The Blazer cell putting out 2.8 amp hours or 2,800 milliamp hours, a little bit less than the claimed 3,400. Again, this is a protected cell and that protection kicked in at 2.6 volts in this case. So I'll just put up on the screen at the moment the table with those four cells and how they actually performed. And whilst you're taking a look at that, I'll just tell you now that what I did is I had the cut off voltage of the battery tester, so the uh, electronic load itself, has a lower voltage and that was set to 2.3 volts. That was just in case any of the cells didn't have a protection circuit or the protection circuit was set at a, uh, an unknown voltage. I didn't want to pull any of the cells lower than 2.3 volts and realistically in a real world example you wouldn't do that anyway. Okay, so there you go. There's four cells quickly tested and their actual capacities um, demonstrated. Uh, but I'm now wondering a couple of other cells that I've got. I've got some 3500 milliamp hour cells, some Kepler ones, uh, as well as a few other no name brand cells, as well as some um, typical blue lithium cells from the electronics store that you would find in many projects. Uh, I'd like to see how all of those actually perform. And I've also tested a AnyLoop. So this is a 1.2 volt double A sized nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery. Uh, and that one, just as an aside, actually produced a 1.5 amp hour capacity, uh, which was really, really good considering it's rated at 1.9. But there you go. That's all I've got time for this week. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And by all means, subscribe to the videos. 
and I'll be doing a bit more of these as soon as I possibly can and next week I'll actually be putting up a video review of this 60 watt electronic load and its battery testing functionality. So thanks for joining me.